First half of season 11 has seen a few rookies make outstanding debuts, but their success, while impressive, has been sporadic. As the series heads to the second half, a familiar two-time champion tops the points, and the team's race, well, while closer than most expected, is indeed led by the preseason favorite. Can the new name steal the show again, or will the veterans keep order? Stay with us to find out from Autobron Internationale Enzo e Dino Ferrari. It's Apex Online Racing's Formula Renault 2.0 Season 11 Championship. And all the doubleheader action, that includes the 40 minute feature followed by the 25 minute sprint can be seen live as it happens right here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Buongiorno, and it is indeed Autodrome, not Autobahn. We are in Italy, not in Germany. And everyone, welcome to another GSRC broadcast. Joe Peak joins yours through the Bill Soup's on to bring you our words eye view. Sean Ambrose has director duties, armed with cameras locked and loaded by Dougie Beard. Joe, I won't say that Canada's most sport gave the drivers more than they could handle, but it certainly was a handful. What do the competitors have in front of them today here in Italy? What the competitors have is a track notorious for difficult overtaking. There's plenty of chicanes that have been added to this circuit since it was built in the 50s, and in fact, some have been altered multiple times. It used to be known for being scary fast, but its nature today is more of a technically demanding circuit. It's cramped full with 17 turns over its three miles, and the only long straight left is the front stretch. What all this means is that you might wind up seeing some desperate moves if anybody gets frustrated and feels like they're running out of time. The incident limit might, as, might well come into play too, because. Uh, and that's only if a driver hasn't destroyed their car by plowing over the tall curves in places. This is sort of the antithesis to the other Italian equivalent of in fame here, Monza. Well, Monza is all long straights and draft battles at high speeds. This track is all twists and turns, forcing drivers to play patient and hope for a mistake from the rival. That, or they may use the pit stops to try and jump the person they're being held up by. Don't take this to mean it's gonna be a boring race. The incredible driving prowess needed to be fast here tends to squeeze errors out of even the most steady hot shoe. In fact, to give you the best idea of why this place is so hard to drive, let's hop on board with the GSRC lap guide. All right, we've got Amjad Yaman in the GSRC Formula Renault 2.0, so let's do a lap around Imola. You're gonna try and straight line the pit straight as much as you can with how it weaves. Then, at the end, line up to the right and be very careful not to dip your tires into the grass. It won't be uncommon to see drivers go spinning into the gravel because of that. Don't drift all the way out after the second apex of Tamburello so that you won't have to lift while rounding the final left kink. From there, we've got a bit of a rest before Villeneuve. The first part of this chicane is very inviting and fast, but don't let it lure you into an entry that's too hot. Try to line yourself up for the second part to keep someone from pipping you into Tosa. Speaking of which, this uphill hairpin is tougher than it looks. The low speeds mean the downforce of the car won't help your traction, so it'll take a light right foot getting to the power. Now we charge uphill towards Piratella. You've got a very blind crest, but with all the downforce of the Renault, it's no problem. The deceiving thing about this turn is that the car wants to understeer, so a lot of drivers will wind up missing the apex thinking they can carry more speed. However, now you gotta set up for Aqua Minerali. The first part is a quick flick and you'll be braking as you round it. Then, try not to lock the brakes as you try to turn into the second apex. If you drift wide, it'll be bad news because iRacing will give you a slowdown penalty for taking too much liberty with the exit. Since we're coming up to the Alta Chicane, that'll be extra bad news since it'll give your opponent a chance to overtake. Once again, don't get too greedy on the exit of the corner because otherwise you'll be told to give the time back. Now, we'll finally come back downhill for good as the track weaves back and forth one more time. We're coming up to Ravazza, so let the car slide over to the right, then straighten her out and throw out the anchors. The downhill entry will make the car want to push wide on the first apex, but you really want to make sure you execute well on the second apex. This is the longest acceleration zone of the track coming back to the front stretch, so a bad run off the corner is going to leave you very, very vulnerable. Hopefully that's not the case, so as we come back to the line, we finish the lap around Imola. A 
along with being technical, you know, a lap around here is also kind of piscorex as Joe Peak takes us around. All right, Joe. The last round in the sprint race, Charlie Summers was perfect for 20 laps, but on the 21st and final lap, he made a mistake while leading, and that awarded the sprint win to Gio Cortesi, allowing the Spaniard to accomplish the double, winning both the feature and the sprint. So with that in mind, best of day honor should uh, not be much of a surprise, right? Absolutely. A perfect weekend means that uh, he gets perfect points. Now, what is a surprise, though, is Rene Osterkamp. Uh, you see, he didn't have bad results. A third and a fifth. Those are pretty good, pretty consistent, but only 39 points out of that. Uh, so well behind what Gio Cortese scored. But the good news for uh, Osterkamp, that we'll get to in a bit, uh, Cortese isn't really the one he needs to worry about in the championship. So it's still a pretty good day for Rene. Uh, Kerry Nolden, though, keeping him honest, only lost one point in, in that one. And Nolden is a hot shoe typically, so you can expect him to be a challenge uh, still after that. Elaine Tessier a little bit farther back. Another good weekend, though. Sixth and a fourth uh, actually tied with Charlie Summers, who got a second place in that uh, sprint race that he unfortunately lost in the final lap, Bill. Uh, what about the driver standings? What are we looking at for there? Yeah, let's see how that plays out now. With GSRC staff boys, Simon and Poindexter are now taking into account two of the three possible drop races allowed for in the rules. You see those with the two highlighted droplets up there. The top five overlay begins to tell the true story of this season. Positive Sim Racing Green, Luba Morris is only 28 back of two-time champion Rene Osterkamp racing for Sim RC. Now, while 49 points back in the raw numbers, the smaller interval shown on this graphic is because Morris has the benefit of dropping two bad results, while Osterkamp will not get to count a pretty substantial 28-point event. Who is the number one driver for Team AOR Orange? Well, you can't tell by looking at the points as Phil Reed and Kerry Nolden are deadlocked. Nolden's recent speed drops Sim RC Retro Stefan Herman down into fifth. Let's go to the team championships. And again, these numbers also account for the two drop races allowed for in the rules. Defending champion Patrick Kessler, and he's not here today as of as I'm speaking, he may show up late, but so far he hasn't made an appearance. He sits seventh in the driver points while his teammate Rene Osterkamp leads. We mentioned Phil Reed and Kerry Nolden both tied for third. So the end result for Sim RC, AOR Orange by all uh, leads AOR Orange by only 22 points. Now uh, that's a smaller gap between Osterkamp and Morris who are in the driver's crowd. Lubomir Morris and Alexei Sorokin, uh, they had a horrible day in Canada experiencing they, they combine for only two points for the entire event as PSR Green drops a spot. Simon Grossman's earns no points for most sport, and thanks to Stefan Herman's 21, Sim RC Hold Station. Glacier is gone. VRT Eracing Phoenix is back. And i got to give apologies to Evan Emery and Sarah Dub for AOR Purple. While they're fifth in the raw numbers, they sadly sixth in the two-drop total, so no overlay appearance for them this round. Remember, the commentator is only the messenger. Send your complaints to Simon and Poindexter. Joe, there'll be nothing disappointing about the series details. Yep, it's pretty familiar for anybody who's watched any of these double headers. You mentioned those three drops that they're going to get. Uh, now, they are open setups in these races. This is going to be very important, especially with the conditions out there today. There are cool conditions, which means it's going to be grippy, and which means you have to ask yourself, do I try to trim some of it out with how twisty this track is to help me overtake? Uh, as we said, uh, double header today there, you see the two times. We'll go more into what this first one will entail. The no fast repairs. Now, that will be extremely important in today's race because I mentioned in my track description, they have tall curbs in a number of places here. And these cars are notorious for getting damage if you get greedy with those tall curbs. So you could see some drivers fall back either because of that damage or because of repairs in the pit stops when they try to get that damage fixed. Now, what about this race specifically? This first one is gonna be 40 minutes long. It's what they call the feature. And the grid is sequential. What that means is the qualifying that's happening right now will sort the order for this start. It'll be different in the sprint. Uh, they do have one expected pit stop in this race. And the incident cap that I mentioned in the pre-race, well, that's 15 incidents. That means any off tracks, any spins, contact with the wall, contact with other cars, that counts up incident points. After you hit 15, you are removed from the track immediately. 
32 points for wins means this is going to be the more important of the two races that we have. So even though you're going to be uh, shuffled to the back, uh, it's not as important that you win that sprint race. And uh, the regrid uh, that I just mentioned, well, that means that if you finish within the top 20, uh, you will be regrid for the next race, but that's only if you finish within two laps. It is a decent lap length around here, not super long. So hopefully if you've got decent pace, you shouldn't get lapped and you definitely shouldn't get lapped two, line, two times if you have decent pace, Bill. But the all important thing really, I think is gonna be avoiding those incidents and avoiding damage for the car. Practice is done. Let's go ahead and check in and see what's going on in qualifying. We'll put our weather outlook here off for a second while we look and see who's at the top of the chart. No surprise, there he is, the points leader Rene Osterkamp up on top. Yeah, and that flash of the weather, that is going to be important. I talked about the grip out there today, but there's also the wind. Now, the good news is uh, they don't do the random weather, the variable weather that uh, iRacing offers. This is a fixed weather. So that 14 to, uh, miles an hour that you see, Bill, is going to be consistent. And if anybody's been warming up, if they haven't been warming up, it's going to be a surprise if they come in now. Uh, but if they've been warming up, they kind of know what it has in store because it will loosen the car up in certain corners. Uh, so that's really the only way it's going to affect things. Is if anybody comes in at the end of qualifying here and they've been practicing in a different session, uh, then they might be surprised to find, oh, wow, the car really wants to whip around in, in certain corners. Yeah, the series the series organizers are pretty smart. They, they set the weather for for the night before practice so everybody has time to practice on it the night before and then it's also the same for both the the sprint and the feature event you don't have to worry about a setup right there and there's renee osterkamp our point leader and uh grossman, about yeah go ahead oh, uh, grossman sitting in fourth and actually just jumps up to third it looks like he's not going to be able to do better but this is a good thing that he's up this far on the second row one thing that we haven't talked about bill we see a lot of times this first chicane that we see Grossman just kind of cruising through right now, Tamburello, it tends to cause some big accidents, especially if you're in the mid pack. So you really, not only do you want to be up front and qualifying here because of the difficulty in passing, but because you want to avoid the chaos at the start. Riding on board with the French driver now that showed up on best of day as he was down there, I think about fifth position. Had a really good run in Canada. Alain Tachier. Oh, Thomas Edwards with an issue. Yeah, and uh, he's well down the order, sitting in 20th. And I think this is his third lap, so that one probably not going to count with that spin that we saw as uh, he crosses the line. And actually, I don't see that one counting there. Now it comes across, so yes, it does not count. 20th going to be well down the order for Thomas. It's going to be a tough day. Looking at Daniel Morris. We think we have a time lap coming in. He crosses the line. Nope, it's a slow one for him. So just got fooled on that. He's only going to get one more in, I believe. Because once the clock uh, comes down, he's not going to get his hot lap in. And Tim Matsky is definitely not going to have that lap count there. You can tell by the, the shininess of the track and the length of the shadows. We are indeed racing in the late afternoon here. Lubomir is going to abandon this lap, it looks like. So next one going to be across is David Santana. He sits down in 22nd. Actually, uh, Santana's run all three of his laps, so 22nd is where he will sit. The one behind him is the one that shocks me. Phil Reed, he's in 23rd. His first two laps didn't count, Bill. And his last one must have been some sort of banker lap, only a 142 compared to 39 from the other guys. Yeah, and I'm not sure if uh, if he has the three that are in, or I don't think this one's going to count either. No, no they only get three laps, Bill. This yeah. He's done. This is it for Phil. Well, he's got his work cut out for him. Of course, in the rules, all he really needs to do is get a halfway decent finish. He'll get some benefit on the regrid for the sprint race. There's Daniel Morris. Yeah, but he's probably hoping for some points. I don't think he's thinking about a regrid. Yeah. Daniel Morris has not got a single time in, so this is all or nothing for him, and he will be able to cross the line before the clock runs out. Relatively so, small field here for AOR and standards, as we're only 26 drivers. Hey, Morris does get up there in the 19th. Yeah, at least he gets one in. Yeah, and, and 
a bit surprising. It's just not not an unpopular track. I'm really kind of confused as to why we've got such a small field. But this is this is good news for guys like Reed, who uh, has very few cars to overtake before he gets to the regrid. And with that done, let's go ahead and give you the starting order right now. And it is Osterkamp, Rene Osterkamp on the pole. He's going to be flanked by Vitaly Lander. Simon Grossman and Luke Barton fill up row two. Stefan Herman and Dominic Gatemeyer. Hey, how about them? They go fifth and sixth. Kerry Nolden and Josh Ladd in row four. Row five is Dominic uh, Lubomir Morris and Matty Sipola. Joe? Charlie Summers starts 11th with Leonard Sherry in 12th, and it's Ali Hay starting P13. Tom Van Hoyman will be next in 14th. David Boudelar starts 15th with Elaine Tessier in 16th position. Christopher Rigby will be 17th at the drop of the green with Evan Emre at 18th. Daniel Moore in 19th as we watched, and Tim Matsky starts 20th. Then the last five drivers, Thomas Edwards, Matty, there's a new name, Marty Part Pardo is here. That's a new name we haven't seen before. David Santana, Phil Reed, way back in 24th, Giovanni Salito and Connor Bryan, the last two cars. 26 names on the entry list, 25, 24, 25 put in qualifying. Renee Osterkamp will lead them down into the first corner. Tamborella, it's really not a corner, is it, Joe? It's more of a chicane. Yep, yep. It used to be a single corner, a very fast single corner, practically flat out in F1 cars. Uh, but uh, in these machines, it's definitely not flat out through the chicane. Will be a great passing zone, though, something that you can watch as they get a good run out of Ravaza down the kind of winding straightaway that'll be flat out, although it twists back to the left and back to the right, then they go into there. A lot of chicanes here at uh, Imola, but they're they have a good flow to them. It's not so bad. You can hear the engine start to harmonize right now. Let's get the second half of the season underway. Gather up the chicken steak, cover behind the cows. The horses are out of the barn. Two-time champion and current point leader, Rene Ostergamp, leads them down into the first one. He takes the defensive line. A lander looks through the house, but outside, Grossman back in third. Barton in there as well, Herman in fifth. So far, so good. And the rest of the pack, I think everybody was aware of the danger in that chicane. So it looks like we got through clean. But now we come up to Villeneuve. This one can be sneaky tough, too. You tend to see spins because uh, drivers take it too hard in the first apex. But so far, so good as half the field is through. And now the entire field is through as they head down into Tosa. And the and Tosa and the leaders are already through that hairpin. Yeah, really, the only side-by-side -side action we've got is everybody's single file is Ali Hay and Leonard Sherry. This is down in 12th and 13th, and they're going to try and take it side-by-side -side through Piratella. Van Hoyman's going to stick his nose in as they come to... Wow, he makes the pass in a hop in a row. Bill, that is rare that you see that happen. So far, so good. Now they head to the next chicane, which is Alta. We had a big incident with Marty Pardo, the new guy, and uh, I think David Santana involved in it. Three cars scattered in Aquaman and Raleigh, but I think they all continue. And now the leaders head down into Ravasa. This is kind of the double right hand, left hander here. Yep. Oster Camp is through. He's going to get credit with leading the lap. Bataria Lander is back by about two tenths of a second, but watch out for Grossman. Grossman's got a good run. I would not be surprised if that yellow card doesn't make a move on second as they head down into the first corner. Yeah, Here he comes. Val Valtteri made the critical mistake. The exit of Ravazza is so important to keep yourself from being susceptible. In fact, I think he's going to lose two here, Bill. Look at this. They've got Barton coming in. Luke ducks his nose in there and does get third. A Lander Ooh. back to fourth. Somebody spinning off track and a number of cars get into them. Uh, I think that Maddie, was... Matty Simpla involved that was, in it. That's the big name. Nolan, too. Gatermeyer started it. He unfortunately stopped right on the racing line, which is why he had some contact. I think we got the replay. Yeah, this is a big one. It involves a couple names. Now, Nolan gets a piece of this one. You know, I think this started. Josh Ladd was on his inside. You, you saw there, it was just ahead of the car that we were looking at. And that's what caused him to spin, because he kind of squeezed him out to the grass a little bit. And I think that's what caused him to lose traction. And we come back live. Oh. 
Sipla, this report, the Sipla got a nose of, I think Sipla's really in bad shape. Nolden took Evasive's action through the dirt. Ooh, Josh Latt seems to be struggling a little bit, so that contact may have hurt him. Gatormeyer returns in 17th, way down the order. But uh, this battle for second, not over. A lander is still on the back, but I think it's Barton who's going to look to try to make a move. Yeah, remember Barton followed uh, Grossman through to get that third position as he went around a launder. A little too far back to make a pass down into the first corner. Let's see, here he comes. Going to go defensive. Grossman covers him off. And it's hard to come back around someone. Maybe you can get a run off of here. And I think he does. But again, passes are tough into Villeneuve. And you can see he immediately knows that Grossman goes defensive. This is where I typically try to set someone up, Bill, is, is get the exit off of Villeneuve up to Tulsa. Uh, some people don't expect it. You can make that sneak attack and dive to the inside, but nothing happened in here this time. He's right on board with Stefan Herman. He is the fourth car in the line there. He is right behind Grossman, Barton, Alander, and then it's him. Now Herman and Grossman are teammates for Sim RC, RC Retro. Those cars are painted exactly like Ostercap, but Ostercap is tuned up Sim RC with Patrick Kessler, who is indeed not here today. We can expect to see a few trains like this, Bill. I, I keep talking about that difficulty in overtaking, and it tends to, this is where the, the term really started to take hold, the truly train, where you're caught behind someone who's slower than you, but they're slow in the places where you can't get by. This is the best racing on track right now, so we'll stay on it for a minute. Grossman has fallen 2.2 seconds behind Ostercamp, who's really moving. Back in ninth, we got a, another little uh, group of cars coming together. Tom Van Hoyman, Charlie Summers, and Elaine Tessier, along with Phil Reed. Uh, and poor Phil Reed, already a lap down. In fact, he's going to take his pit stop along with Tessier. Let's go back up to second as here comes the pass. Barden gets a run down and does close the deal, I think. Luke's on the move. Oof, he had to be aggressive. You could see he locked him up trying to get it turned in. But excellent job. I mean, despite that, he made it stick. So now let's see how far he's got to go. Almost three seconds up to Ostercamp. I think these cars are pretty evenly paced right now. Also, Herman was able to get around Alander as Alander continues to fall. He's dropped back into what would be fifth position. Ooh, moved to the inside down look to Piratella. Grossman takes a look at it. It's hard to make that one work. I think he's going to have to give up by uh, Aqua Mineralli because he's on the outside here. Yeah, see, he knows it. All this horseplay is just letting Ostercamp drive away as he's picked up another half second now. Well, Terry kind of surprises me. His his pace in qualifying implied that he's pretty fast, but he dropped these positions so early, and uh, he doesn't seem to really be in a, in a hurry to try and get him back for it. So I, I'm not sure what's going on with Valtteri. Maybe he got a little bit of damage, or maybe he just is better at qualifying than he is at race pace. Let's stay with these guys one more time as they come down the straight. Then we'll drop back to ninth position. Look what's going. Looks like Barton gets a good run. Oh, look at this. Here comes on Grossman. Here comes Herman. Pair of teammates going at him. Yeah, and he didn't cover him off. He let him have the inside. It tends to be kind of easy to, to just fade across on somebody if they've got to run because of the way the track moves back and forth. And he's well ahead by the breaking for Tamborello. So nice move by Herman. Okay, I, I believe that those guys, I think Barton's going to drive away. Let's go back to ninth position. This was a little closer a bit ago. This is Tom Van Hoyman in ninth position. Charlie Summers has been all over his gearbox. Charlie's fallen back since I last looked at it. But I think he'll get back up there. Yeah, we know that Charlie knows how to race well. And and unfortunately, his one mistake was really costly last week. But uh, he's got himself up to 10th for now. That's one position up from where he started. And he's not outside of, of range of Tom Van Hoyman. He could still manage to gather himself up and, and try to make an attack here. And again, even in, in Summer's defense, it was we had our pit reporter, Stefan uh, uh, Slocker, was saying that 
Summer's mistake at, at most part was hitting a landmine, just one of the yeah. glitches in the in the program, right? Yeah, I, I I looked at it too in the in the post race, and it really wasn't his fault. He was just a victim of of horrible luck. We're gonna go back up to this battle up front again. The two Ooh. teammates working at each other. Uh, Grossman's got to be careful. He was way too close in the breaking into Rivata. You could see how much that cost him to Herman. And also, now, he's got Valtteri. The Finn has a fantastic opportunity to finally get one of these spots back. Yeah, don't be fooled by Alondra. He's a cool customer right now. I think he's just minding his, just taking his time. He's going to have to do it on the outside. He's good momentum. He should be able to close the door before they get there. And he does. Look at that as Grossman gives it up. Yeah, great job by, by Valtteri. Whenever you're on the outside coming up with Tamburello, that's that's a very difficult ask to make that work. And uh, he's actually not even going to be under attack from Grossman here into, into Villeneuve, so he got himself a good exit. Look how far they're carrying it over the curb up towards that gravel. they got to be careful when these cars own to spin ahead of them. Luke Barton gives all three spots up in one little mistake, Bill. Take another look at it. Yeah, this is a slow hairpin coming up Tosa, so there's a temptation with this uphill and not a lot of power in these Renaults to, to just mash that gas down. And you're going to see what he did here, Bill. Ooh, he took a lot of gravel on the exit there, too. Is, is he just gets on it too soon, it loops around on him. And this is the sort of thing that I mentioned, that you're just you're waiting for the driver ahead to make that one mistake and everybody's going to pounce as soon as they see it because there's just very few chances to try and make those good passes. We talked about Alander. He had fallen back. He started in second, followed all the way back into fifth position, took his time, got around a Grossman, and then when, when Barton made his mistake, Alander back up there in that podium position, racing in third right now. Yeah, and Herman's only about half a second up, but uh, he's not as close to Herman as Grossman is to a lander. Can we see another overtake here? And, uh, behind them, Barton did come in to pit. Oh, he's closing fast. I think Grossman's going to give it a go. Well, maybe not. There you can see the shine of that low sun on that on that slick racetrack there as we ride on board with Grossman. Yeah, but that low sun is is what these drivers love because it tends to cool the track down a little bit as the shadows stretch across. And uh, a little bit of science for you, Bill, when the sun is directly pointing at something, it makes it hotter quicker. So, no, I, well, I mean, some people might not know. It, it, a direct sun versus coming in at an angle at the pavement, it doesn't heat up as quickly. Thank you, Bill Nye, for teaching me, me that uh, uh, back in fifth grade. Okay. We Ooh, wow. Go ahead. And around the outside into Aqua Mineral from uh, Terry. That was brave stuff. Let's go ahead. We can take another look at that one. We have it on replay. This may be a bad exit out of Puritella. Second time we've seen a pass into Aqua Mineral here. Oh, yeah, he just swings a little wide. He was off into that uh, that AstroTurf. And like that, Stefan Herman, just he didn't have anything. He wasn't brave enough in the brakes to try and, and uh, win that game of chicken. Okay, now you saw Luke Barden spin. You may be wondering what happened to him. Well, he took up, oh my goodness, and there's another off there from Satella, never mind. Uh, Luke Barden took a pit stop. So he's the leaders of all the cars who have pitted now, but there's some awful big names back there we have to keep an eye on. Matty Slipple and Kerry Nolden. Remember, they were involved in that incident early on. I think they came in early, got some repairs. They're out there racing in uh, 20th to 21st right now. Yeah, and as uh, we go to him, he's still chasing down Christopher Rigby. Should be able to overtake him at some point. They come down towards Ravazza. Not going to have a chance down into here, but all he needs really is a good exit out of the second apex of Ravazza. Should be a slam dunk for him down into Tamborello. And as you look at Sipla, he currently sits in what we call the Dos Equis position. I think that's a little bit of a full position. He should be able to pick oh, up it, some more when the driver's in front of him. Yeah. Well, remember, he's already taken his pit yeah. stop, and he's, uh, let's see, 
He's maybe half a straightaway back from Luke Barton, who is our highest pitter right now, who we know is on pace. So I think Sipple is actually sitting in a very good spot. And uh, actually, Rigby's taken his pit stop as well. So this is a legitimate position for Rigby. It is. Uh, Sipple's car was a little bit he, slow, oh. so that's why. Josh Ladd just had a problem. He's dropping multiple spots. This was in uh, in Alta, the last chicane of the of the circuit. You can see he's got it going again. We'll Let's get a look at the look replay. At That's too bad for Josh. He was next on my list to go to. He was having a great race, racing in in fifth. You're gonna see this this second curb. This is the one that he hits just barely, just that little bit of raising the car up. You get air under the car bill, you lose grip. And you could see when he tried to get on the power, it was just, there was too much pendulum momentum taking the rear around. Lubomir Morris, Alistair Hay, and Charlie Summers all pick up spots from that spin. You gotta be careful with those tall little curves. There you can see the little sausage curves that they had on the inside of both uh, Tamburello and Villeneuve. Those are ones you really don't want to hit as well. Go back to this battle of the two cars that have pitted. This is Cipla and Rigby. The car that we saw a little glance of going off, that was Nolden actually. So he'll have to gather himself together and regain this ground. We watch from the back of Rigby. Cipla is within the slipstream. I don't think he's close enough though. He's going to get right on the edges where he could flirt with a dive bomb, but with uh, Rigby covering off the inside, that's just not happening. Boy, but he's going to, if he can just wait for the right, he's close enough where he can get a good run. Yeah, this is where I talked about. You set yourself up for this exit. He was much tighter to the apex. Ah, it just wasn't enough. Sometimes what you can hope for when you get those cars to go way off into the AstroTurf out of Villeneuve and where they clip the uh, the gravel, that's when you can make that surprise attack that I mentioned in Potosa. He's right up behind him, but Paratella is so fast and, and just off camber. The car understeers here, and now he's got the wake of the car ahead. You can see he just he can't attack. Ooh, but that's a big mistake out of Aquamina Raleigh by Rigby. A little bit closer. Maddie definitely could have had a chance to try and attack here into Alta. And all this is doing is keeping Morris right up behind them. He's in the popcorn position, Bill. If those two start fighting, it'll be very easy for them to tangle and Daniel to take two for one. Morris has also made his stop. I really think now if uh, Sipla can get a good run out of a Ravaza here, he should be able to get this done. He's pretty darn close. A lot of wheel spin from Rigby. This is his best chance. He's really got to go hard on this one. He's got and the inside he, too. He gets to the inside. Morris too far back to capitalize on this. Hey, look at this though. It's Rigby really got some good straight line speed. He's going to make him work it. Get this. Yeah, I think that uh, uh, that straight line speed that you mentioned is what was making it so tough for him to get by. But he's got it done now. All he's got to do here in the twisty bits is try and pull away. I think he's going to do that. Let's assume he's able to hold on to that spot. Director, can we go to ninth and look at Tom Van Hoyman? Rolling Thunder starting to run him down. Evan Emre. Yeah, there we see Emre trying to stay close within the slipstream. They come onto the front stretch once again. Looking on that top 10, now gonna be eighth and ninth actually as uh, Josh Ladd has retired and is out of his car. But Emre not close enough for nope. an attempt. Herman and Grossman, third and fourth. So Alander back where yep. we thought he would wind up being. 
This makes a lot more sense to me. So maybe just a little bit of a shaky start for Valtteri. Maybe he's the type of driver who prefers to kind of be on his own, who uh, can just run his laps, which is what he's doing right now. As we uh, watch Emre and her, or, uh, Van Hoyman. Big yep. mistake through Paratella. That makes that just absolutely easy. Emre up into eighth. Van Hoyman now has to settle for ninth. Looking through it, everybody's starting to get a little bit separated. Especially our leader. Let's report Thomas Edwards had an off. It's about his second or third time. This time he put it in the wall. That might be into that. Remember, Luke Barton, we can't forget about him. He was in the mix with these guys. He made that mistake and he lost. He was racing in second. He fell back to fourth. He came in and took his pit stop. He's currently in 13th. And up at the top of the screen, Alander just set the fastest lap of the race. I think he was the first one to dip into the 39s. Yes, the only driver now who's broken that 140 mark, including, oh, no, I take that back. Osterkamp's fastest was a 139.8. He's the only uh, other driver who's managed that. In this series, there are bonus points for fastest lap. So that's one Ooh. point right now. Giovanni Salido not only had an off, but he had a bunch of cars had to take avoiding action to get around him. In fact, I think he got clipped by two. It looks like Daniel Morris was one of them. Here's Salido. It's going to be in uh, Alta that this happens. Right here on the exit of the chicane. One gets him, two gets him. Oof. And Morris was that second one that actually lifted Salido up in the air. Daniel's, Daniel's not going to have a fun day here, but you can see already getting overtaken in the replay there as we come back live. That that wing damage, he's going to have to take a new front wing or else he's just going to be a sitting duck the rest of the race. As he continues to explore the boundaries of the track. Oh, one of our other front runners, Ali Hay. Takes a stop. As he comes in, I'd like to pick up Barden in 13th. I would expect Barden would get him. Barden was about... Uh, yeah, oh, about he'll he'll easily be ahead. Behind. Yeah. Then about 42 seconds to a launder. Sippel is probably the one that Ali Hay is racing right now, if we're honest. Ali Hay is actually done with his stop already. It takes a long time to get to the green cones that allow you to get off the pit limiter. You could see, I really, I still want to know why they don't use those garages for for pits here. And there goes Barden by in 12th. Hayes cycles out in 13th. Oh, he's way ahead of Cipolla. So Barton got about four seconds over Ali Hay there after pit stops are done. The gap from Barden to Grossman, which is maybe the guy that we'd like to get to, is is 40 seconds. Ah, boy, I think that's a tall ask if he can do the undercut on Grossman. I would think Grossman would be able to get yeah. in now, but it is kind of a long pit lane. Well, everybody right now is looking at 42, 41 seconds uh, of, of from cone to cone. Oh. So, yeah, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to manage that. One guy that would be comfortable that doesn't have to worry about being undercut is Rene Osterkamp, as he is just doing what he does. Wire to wire so far. Remember, and the pit window is really large in this series. They, they can put in as much fuel as they like, but they just have to come in and stop and take two tires. Yeah, so at this point, it's probably going to be determined on when you catch traffic. Now, looking at the lap times, 39.8, 40.0, 40.6 for a lander, 40.3, 40.1, 40.2. So Osterkamp's actually looking a lot more consistent than Valtteri. Even though Valtteri holds that fastest lap, 
He's looking a little bit more mistake prone. The car might be a little bit more loose, might be, not have the confidence that Renee does to really stick the car where he needs it. And that's uh, the reason that's important, Bill, is even though Valtteri will get the bonus point for having that fastest lap, to me, it says he doesn't have a good chance to try and run Renee down for the win. Let's go back to second right now and look at Alonda as we have it right there. I think the fastest laps, what is going to benefit him as he comes up behind David Boutelard, the, the French driver. It opened up a gap from Herman and Grossman. He doesn't have to worry about them so much. I don't think he has any hopes of getting to Ostercamp, unless Ostercamp makes a mistake. And we've seen races. You just keep out there racing, and uh, if you can knock off a few seconds here and there, it can come back to pay off if the leader makes a mistake. Change for ninth place, Van Hoyman and Sherry. Van Hoyman continuing to drop backwards. Remember, we saw him with a little bit of an off, handed it over to uh, Emre. He's also uh, now got Sherry in front of him, and actually has Emre overtaken Summers since we last looked. Yep, just happened. The Summers uh, was racing in six. Emre just got him. Oh, and, and now both it looks of them like they're both going to come in. But the car of Sherry stays out, and Van Hoyman follows them. So this won't allow them much of a chance to jump each other with the pit stops, but it will allow Sherry maybe to do something with it. I'm going to assume, and as, as Hay rolls by right now, she's gonna vulture all those spots. Now, Christopher Rigby. Rigby might be the guy that'd be interesting. I think he's too far back. Yeah, but yeah, Rigby's got troubles of his own. He's not worrying about the pit stops. He's got Elaine Tessier right behind him. In fact, close enough behind as they come off Tamburello, or excuse me, Ravazza, that uh, the pass into Tamburello to me looks pretty likely here. Imre is in and out safely. Here's the pass made. On the inside, Tessier gets him. Rigby and poor Kerry Nolden, who's just had a rough day back there in 16th. Watching him. Yeah, he's just holding station at this point. He will be regrid, though. He is on the lead lap, and he's uh -huh. in 15th. And uh, bad news for Phil Reed, even though he's only one lap down. We talked about him trying to come forward. He's in 21st right now and he's got 47 seconds to get ahead of Marty Apardo, who has pitted. Grossman's comes in, Reed hoping for some misfortune to find somebody in front of him. Yeah, that's, that's about his only hope because uh, pretty much every car within range of him has pitted. Here we see Sherry coming in. Barton just out of uh, Ravaza, so that would be the only guy to get there, and I don't think he's going to think he's too far back. And, so and Lido Ali, and, hey. and Sherry. Go ahead. Did, did Barton have... I think Barton had a major mistake yep. just a couple laps ago. <clears throat> Sorry. Because um, Ali Hay is ahead of him. Did we catch Barton making an off or nope. a spin? Nope, we did not. So Barton oh. has had another remember. And and we just had our first driver fall victim, I think, to the incident limit. Uh, Dominic Gatermeyer spun into Tamburello and the car went bye-bye. The, the bad news for, for Phil Reed on that one is Gatermeyer was actually behind him. So that's not a spot that's going to help Reed. Our leader is in. A so, lander stays out. And again, we don't expect a lander to try to be able to uh, jump him in these stops, but this will this will allow him to at least run pace on his own because I don't think he has any traffic ahead of him. He did pass David Boudelar recently, but it's a long ways up to Tim Matsky. Three drivers that have yet to pit, a lander, Stefan Herman, and Lubomir Morris. They race first, second, and third. And we see our points leader coming out in fourth position. 
with a whole bunch of clear track in front of him too. So this was a great call with the number 29. Strategy-wise, uh, he's looking just as solid as his pace is. It's going to be very, very hard to pry the lead away from Rene. And good news for Phil Reed fans. Daniel Morris has DNF'd. <laughs> so Phil Reed is now in 20th. Uh, we could be looking at our sprint race winner if uh, he doesn't gain a whole bunch of spots to get regrid. Because even if he gets regrid into second, third, fourth, uh, Phil Reed is going to be yeah. a, a hard one to overtake. There are some big names back there, though. They're going to be close to him. Cipla, Nolder are going to have good positions well, too, if they come in. 11 minutes left, so really not a hurry for any of these drivers to come in. Again, the only rule, Bill, is that they they can't pit on the very last lap. They can lit on, uh, they can pit on the uh, penultimate lap. Seems like a simple rule, but we've seen people forget about that one and try to pit on the last lap. Let's go back to 10th position. Charlie now, this Summers is Tom Van Hoyman. Boy, Charlie's is right on top of him. He gets a much better exit out of Puritella, but he's not brave enough to try to risk the car. Charlie's sitting 11th. This is going to be a pretty decent finish for him. Not a phenomenal finish. I don't think he's willing this late in the game to try and do something fully. With only 10 minutes to go, they got quite a distance to get up to Sherry in ninth. Yeah, and he's he's going to get better opportunities new. I think he, he knows that. Uh, that uh, all it takes is one of those mistakes in a place where it's a little less risky and he could pounce. Lubomir Morris has made his stop. Yep, that sorts he him out into fifth. Comes out ahead of Ali Hay. Morris racing by himself today. Uh, Alexei Soroyka not here for positive sim racing green so any points that morris gets that's all that his team is going to make yeah but uh that's still better than what they made at most ports so oh yeah <laughs> i think luba beer will take this a lander is coming around let's see if he comes in this time again he's got just clear track in front of him no hurry yeah he's cruising he's happy to stay out there So he is our last driver that we're waiting on, Bill. And Tim Matsky's still the car ahead of him, but still a number of seconds up the road. So he's not even really hurting his downforce or anything. Uh, this is this is a perfect situation for Valtteri to just race on his own. Valtteri's got 41 seconds back to Stefan Herbert. Only 11 seconds to Ostercamp. There's no way he's going to get out, in and out. Ostercamp's certainly going to inherit the lead, but the question is, where will Herman cycle out in relationship to a lander? Lander was pulling away from Herman before the stops. Those two positive sim racing, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, sim RC retro drivers, Herman and Grossman racing uh, just what they usually do, pretty well paced together right now in third and fourth. Yeah, most everybody's got their own little space of track. Oh, and since we last looked, Summers has overtaken Van Hoyman. But it may be short-lived. Because here comes Tom back on the inside. Yeah, that's the desired line. Down into the braking, he's got a nose ahead. So this could swap back and forth at, uh, for uh, the rest of the race, the way that these two seem to be close on pace. Oh, they coming back again. And now it's Summers back in the lead. Whew. And all this is doing is allowing Alain Tessier, or, oh, excuse me, no, uh, Evan Emre behind them to uh, start to gain spots or start to gain time. But you talked about Tessier. Let's drop back to 12th position because he's got a handful right now with Kerry Nolden this battle for 12th. Yeah, Tessier is uh, running from 16th on the grid, so this is a good bit of gains. He's not going to want to give up one of these. A 
Coming up to Alta. Man, Molden is really close. Now he looks to the inside. I was really surprised that he wasn't ducking his nose in sooner. A little bit wide there, coming off of Alta for Tessier. Let's see if he holds this left side, Bill. If he doesn't get him here, he's going to get him out of this corner. Yeah. Oh, as this you, is this is easy pickings. As you can see, them go past pit entrance while this pass is made. Alander decided to go up one more time. My goodness, Nolda's car does not have any straight line speed. Ooh. Did not get it. Either that or he's waiting. So he almost has to be farther back from him coming off of Ratzabil because if you can get the momentum with the slipstream, it'll make it easier for him to try and get by. But he was so close behind him, I guess it just, it wasn't enough. As soon as he ducked out, you saw what happened. The, the car slowed up like it hit a wall of air. They continue to battle for that position. Summers has pulled away from Van Hoyman. That's not even close. Emery not in the mix either. Another look to the inside and a Puritella. Molden must have the, the rear wing cranked up compared to uh, guys like Tessier. Oh, what a big oh, mistake from Carey is, is going to put him in the wall. He takes a toe. That is day done. Take another look. Yeah, coming, coming out of Aquaman or Raleigh, you're trying to get your foot down really quick, and you're trying also to stay from going too wide because there's that cut course penalty that can cost you so much time. Let's see what happened on the replay here. Yeah, maybe a little bit of the inside curb at the apex could have loosened the car, and that's what swung him around because it looked like it was just it was starting to move just about mid corner on. So that might be good news for, well, actually, I'm looking to see anybody who gets a regrid. Sipla now is two laps down, so in 20th position. I don't think he's going to get the regrid. And a launder finally in. Just about to the edge of the envelope. The person this does help is Phil Reed, because Nolden won't be regrid, but Reed will, and that's one less car. Actually, no, wait, that's bad news for Phil Reed. Excuse me, <laughs> my brain was catching up to my logic. Uh, that's bad news for Phil Reed, because that's one less car that uh, the regrid Osterkamp and Alander uh, will have to deal with. Not to mention that Reed and Nolden are our teammates, too. Now, Herman, this is the interim. Herman is out of Ravaza. Let's see where Arlanda... This is going to be close. I think he's going to get out in front of Herman. Yep, comfortably. So Alander cycles back out in second. A good seven seconds ahead of, of Herman, who's got about one and a half on his teammates. So that's everybody now with just under four minutes of racing to go. The interesting thing is it was about six to seven seconds before the pit stops, and it's only five and a half between Osterkamp and Olander now. So he gained a little time, but really not enough as we take a look at the battle for six. Hay and Barton. Barton may have passed more cars on the track than anybody. He has had a couple mistakes, and he's going to get him one right here as Hay has a really bad exit. Nope, Barton can't capitalize. Look at the wide entrance in, the shallow exit out. But Barton gets it out on the AstroTurf, gets a little squirrely, going to lose all of his momentum. He's got to be careful with that. We've already seen a mistake from Barton here today, and he's got to make sure that the red mist doesn't force more errors out of himself. Uh, getting off on that AstroTurf. I don't know why, Bill. Other tracks, the AstroTurf seems pretty grippy in, in iRacing, but here at Imola, I've always found it to be extremely slippery, and the car just wants to come out from under you. He is in good, pretty good position here as they're they going to be heading to the back half of the track. Ooh, slip up this time from Hay. But he's probably going to cover off the inside coming into the first apex of Ravatsa. Well, he pulls back to the racing line. Barton doesn't go on the attack. 
trick is not to be too close. Oh, this is good. He should get a good run out of here. And I don't think he's too close. I think he's just the right amount. The tight line from Hay. And I think Bard's going to get this done even before they get there. Yep, sure enough. Well, for now, move Luke up into six, Ali back into seven. And they got 15 seconds back to Sherry. So really, they can keep fighting like this if they want. They're not under threat from losing a spot to the car behind. Like to quickly take a look at the driver in 17th. This is Marty Pardo. Why? I think he's going to be the outside of the front row when we regrid. He'll be on the inside of him will be Phil Reed. He, he qualified way back in 22nd yep. so i don't think marty is going to be a threat if anything nope. he's going to be the one that the drivers are going to have to hustle to get around because he's going to be slow on those first few laps one driver i will acknowledge verbally but not visually is connor ryan as he is up 13 spots racing in 13th position he didn't qualify so he doesn't get credit for the hard charger <laughs> but nevertheless it was a good run. Oh, our director's going to go to him anyway. This, hey, this he's going to get 15. Oh, all right, there he we still, go. He still had to race clean, Bill. You okay, okay. For that. And, and they don't they don't give bonus points for that no, anyway. No, they do so not. All, all at, this, uh, at this point, either Connor had uh, enough errors in the... the the qualifying, which we didn't really talk about, Bill. It's really easy to get those off tracks. It's not just in the race that you worry about being DQ'd, but uh, in the qualifying, we saw Phil Reed fall victim to it, where it, if you get those off tracks, it discounts your laps, and suddenly you find yourself under the gun. Connor's a fun guy. He knows the sentiment from the commentator. He tend to get the close. Oh, look at this. Ray Evan and Evan. Evan. He's got the run. Van Hoyman, does he stay defensive? Yes, he is. Going to make him go the long way around. I don't think he's close enough around the outside. Yep. Well, I'll tell you, Tom Van Hoyman has been in a battle this entire race, not always with the same guy, but he has had it to work. Ooh, he is staying right with him. Oh, there's that desperate move I talked about in the intro. Final lap, Bill. So it's uh, actually time to go to Ostercamp. Yeah, he's worked his way around the majority of the track into this the final two corners 14 and 15. he's been leading the first half of the season he's going to start the second half of season 11 with a win in the feature race give it to renee osterkamp here at imola a lander's going to be comfortable in second van hoyman and grossman no battle there a nice podium i think it'd be fun on the grid I think we should go back to 10th real quick. I think these are all going to cycle in. Let's go back and look at Van Hoyman trying to hold off Emre for that top 10 position. Yeah, and I think Emre is going to try and use the slingshot on the main straight. You can sort of do this. It's not powerful enough that I think you should really bank on it. Oh, he took a look to yeah. the inside. That could hurt him. He's got to worry about the exit here. He's got to worry about getting that run, and I think he's got it, but just not enough of one. Unfortunately, I think the start finish line is going to come up too soon before indeed he gets does. there, and indeed it does. So, Van Hoyman holds on for that top 10 finish. Emery gets 11th. And let's go ahead and before we leave, let's talk about the regrid. It looks like it's going to be on the pole. Phil Reed, he finishes an 18th, one lap down on the outside of him, uh, Marty Pardo. But honestly, Reed is the guy you want to put your money on. All right, remember, this is a double header, so the best part of any double header is the break between events, the perfect blend of the post-race high and the pre-race jitters. We'll take a short break. We'll come back to run down the finishing order to talk to some of the drivers before we get all our ducks in a row for the sprint race that will follow shortly. Back in a few.
was next to him. Joe? Well, at the end of the race, that was Evan M. Ray and couldn't quite pull it off at the line. He gets 11th to Lane Tessier. Did uh, manage to get 12th with Connor Ryan finishing in 13th. Christopher Rigby going from 17th to 14th with Tim Matsky, 20th to 15th. So number of drivers taking advantage of others falling by the wayside. And Dave Poudelar comes home in 16th place. Marty Pardo, the first car to finish a lap down in 17th. And the first car to get regrid is going to be Phil Reed. He'll be on the pole from 18th where he finished. Kerry Nolden, unfortunately, won't be regrid. He'll be starting back in 19th where he finished here today. Matty Sippel, the same with him, starting 20th. Uh, Daniel Morris, 21st. Dominic Gatermar, 22nd. Giovanni Salido, 23rd. Josh Ladd, 24th. Thomas Edwards, 25th. And the first car out today, unfortunately, David Santana in 26th. Bill? And we do have somebody to talk to, and it's going to be a good one. We're going to get to talk to Luke Barden, who was really fast, but Luke had a couple issues, and that's why he had to settle for a sixth-place finish. Luke, quick, but a couple mistakes, huh? Yeah, um, I was really surprised, actually. Um, I had quite good pace. Um, I've been basically practicing with uh, race fuel um, for the past couple of races, which has really helped me find some consistency. And uh, it, it seemed like the, the qualifying speed is just free, um, which is great. Um, but yeah, I made I made several mistakes. I spanned twice in pretty big ways. The first one, I don't really know what happened. The back end just came around, and normally I'd be able to catch it, but for some reason it just didn't catch. Um, so I lost all three places to the guys that were trailing behind uh, Rene. But um, yeah, the first couple of laps were really great, actually. Um, I really enjoyed just uh, following the cars ahead and finding the place to overtake because... I'm sure you've noticed that uh, racing with people is a bit of a difficulty for me. And uh, I had a really great moment with uh, Grossman into uh, turn uh, one, uh, which was uh, a really good move. Now I've looked at it on the replay. I really like it. But yeah, it was. Um, I can't complain with seventh, to be honest. Yeah, I don't have a sensitivity in my posterior to, to feel the wind, uh, but but skilled drivers always seem to know those little details. Is that something does it, we were pretty breezy today? Do you have a feel for that out there at all, or does it really not matter? For me, I, I can never feel that kind of thing. I can barely feel the temperature of the tires, to be honest. Um, that's why I drive it like I stole it on the first couple of laps, <laughs> because to me, it's exactly like the other laps. But actually, in the past season, over this past season and a half, um, I really started to feel the temperature of the tires and, and how the car handles and changes over the course of the first sort of 10 laps or so. Well, you know, that made me feel better because drivers talk about that and go, man, I just mop up be getting it. So I'm glad to know that, it, that it's not always me. Hey, congratulations on the sixth place finish. Good luck. You got some uh, uh, only 18 cars regrid, so it's not that far to the front. Bring it home clean. Cool, man. Cheers. Luke Barden, he will be starting... I, I can't really do the math. I think somewhere about row seven, maybe. That's a rough guess. All right. Well, I think with our interview done, I think what we'll do right now is take another break. That'll give us time to get everything ready. Don't go far because the always exciting sprint race, <laughs> man, that one is never short of action. We'll be back in a while for that one. See you in a minute.
Yours truly, Bill Soups Zahn, sharing the microphone with Joe Peak. Sean Ambrose has director duties as we bring you this Globalism Racing Channel production of Apex Online Racing's Formula 0 2.0 Season 11 Championship. It is indeed round 7 of 12. The feature race is in the book, and that means it is time for the always exciting sprint race. Joe, tell us the details. Well, this race, obviously, being the sprint one, is the shorter of the two, 25 minutes, so just over half the length of the previous. Uh, now, we talked about the importance of getting regrid. You had to be above two laps down. Phil Reed going to be the first one that achieves that, so he'll be on the pole, which means a very good opportunity for him to take a win. There are no pit stops in this race. It is straight from start to finish. If you do have to come in, it's going to hurt all the more because you have even less time to try and make up for it. Since it's shorter, you can see the incident cap is lower. We did see at least one driver who fell victim to it. I think we had a couple others. I didn't quite check on uh, how many incidents each driver had there at the end. The win also is worth less. So it's not worth less, uh, as in the word, but it is worth fewer points, of course, than the feature race. But the key here is coming back through to get a good finish, a decent finish, not necessarily a win because we've seen how rare the double is just takes some unusual set of circumstances typically to make it happen. Drivers are out on track right now. Again, there is no qualifying, obviously. They're just going out and practicing. And the situation, the, the, the weather is exactly the same as it was before, so they should be familiar with what they have. They're just getting their rhythm back. Yeah, hopefully it, nobody lost it in the... Uh... 15 minutes we had between the checkers and the green that we're going to have here as uh, we watch them continue to work their way around. But the one thing I think is what they probably learned during the last race on overtaking or defending. Though. That's really the key. What you can do with this weather now that you've got everybody out on track. And, and also, like we listened with Luke, what it does to the tires over the course of the race. It is shorter, but the tires still do still feel an effect from lap one to the end of the race, and, and that informs how you drive it. Now, our pole sitter is going to be Phil Reed, and on reputation alone, you would think he would be a lock for the sprint race win, but honestly, from what I saw of his uh, performance in the feature race, he just did not feel comfortable out there. His qualifying was bad, his racing was bad. Uh, let's assume he gets it together. I still think he's a pretty good bet to get the win here, starting on pole. But uh, we'll see if he got a feel for the track or not. Yeah, I, I think that's a fair point about how he performed in the previous one. But I, I honestly would not bet against him yeah. trying to take away the win here today. It's, it, it's going to be difficult for any of the fast drivers who are mired down in the middle of the pack to try and get up to him. By the time they get clear of all the slower cars, especially in a twisty track like this, he should have been able to pull a gap. The only thing that'll give them hope is if he makes a mistake early on that uh, puts himself back in the middle of things. The driver that's going to be interesting to watch will be the man outside of uh, Reed, and that is Marty Pardo. And let's let's cross our fingers and hope he has the intestinal fortitude to go ahead and start from the second position. I have been there, Marty, in this situation. It's it's Joe. It's no fun. It is really, your heart really starts to pound when you're put in this thing. You just don't want to make a mistake. Yeah, having those faster cars behind you can just be so frustrating because you sit there and think to yourself, ah, why? I, I'm, I'm up at the front. I should be able to take advantage of it. But that's why we see the cream rise to the top. It, those fast drivers are not just there because they can do one lap, but because they can do multiple laps quickly. So eventually, you're working against the numbers. And uh, it... If anything, I think this is a good place for those slower drivers to learn how to deal with, to be with that in that position, because that's something that we don't talk about a lot, Bill, is that uh, when you're a slower driver, and I, I know I'm not nearly as slow as you, but I've never been a front runner, if I'm honest. Uh, when you're up in that position, you deal with all kinds of feelings and pressures that you don't deal with when you're in the back and your heart rate starts to go up. You start to find yourself checking the mirrors more, things that you need to learn to be able to to be able to you know push down to push those feelings away to just ignore that stuff and just focus on the track ahead of you and this is a great chance to try and do that because you're put up at the front uh when you aren't normally there 
And one of the things I love about league racing, where you're racing the same drivers over and over, you get to know the competition. Slow drivers are slow for a reason. It's because our braking zones come sooner than, than the fast drivers. And, and if they know the names, if, if a fast driver knows they're following somebody, they know that they need to brake a little bit earlier than they normally would. Yeah, I always kind of wonder what drivers think of, of my approach, which is basically if I come up to an unknown driver and I find I'm kind of close behind them, I just automatically kind of go off the racing line because if they brake earlier than I expect, yeah, I might make a dive bomb, but at least I don't run into the back of them. Uh, and, and maybe I'll just overshoot the corner and they'll go right back by me or something like that. But uh, I've always kind of wondered if they think, why is he sticking his nose in it? He's being way too aggressive. No, I'm not being aggressive. I'm just covering my bases to make sure I don't take both of us out since I don't know where you're breaking marker is. Yeah. And honestly, the last thing a fast driver wants me to do is, is race a line that I'm not comfortable with. It'll be bad for both of us, so. I'll loop it around right back into you just to try to go by on the inside. Kerry Nolden, our fastest practicer right now. Don't get too excited, though. He's not going to get the benefit of the regrid. He's going to be well back there. Although, Joe, with a small field, even though this is a difficult track to pass on, could be worse for some of those guys. They're, they're going to be close to getting points already. Yeah, and it's funny that we see it here because didn't we have something similar at Mosport where so many drivers wrecked out? that the regrid was extremely yeah. small. So <laughs> that really helped Gio Cortese to do that double that we wondered if he'd get. And, and uh, I, I don't think we'll see the double today. It's, it's so much harder to pass here uh, than it is at most port. So uh, I, I think we'll see it. We'll look to probably an easy top five for our winner last round for uh, uh, for the driver of, uh, of Ostercamp. Yeah, and not to minimize Cort Cortese's accomplishment, but even that double came as a bit of a fluke as it took Charlie Summers to make that. I mean, he, he had that sprint race all sewn up. He, he spins it on the very last lap. But he would but, have had a second without it. I I, I will yep. point out. I mean, I want to yep. give him credit again. It's he, that, that second place would have been a nice haul of points if he would have been in the championship. I think it's uh, going to be time for the grid here in a few moments. These are always exciting. We'll wait for iRacing to give us the official population of the grid. Get them out there, and then we'll run them down for you. There we have it. Okay, sure enough, these are the order that they're supposed to grid, whether they brave enough to be there or not. We'll find out. Phil Reed and Marty Pardo in the front row. David Butelar and Tim Metzke fill up row two. Fifth and sixth go to Christopher Rigby and Connor Ryan. Ryder could be good. Alan Tessier and the Rolling Thunder, Evan Emery in eighth, ninth and tenth, Tom Van Hoyman and Charlie Summers. Leonard Sherry starts 11th with Ali Hay in 12th and Luke Barton in 13th. And it's Lubomir Morris starting P14 and Simon Grossman in the 15th spot. Stefan Herman will start in 16th, Valteri Lander 17th and Renee Osterkamp in 18th. Kerry Nolden starts behind them, first car not regrid in 19th and Matty Sipola follows in P20. Christopher Wrigley was slow to the grid, gonna let us get all the way through these here. Daniel Morris, Dominic Gatermeyer, 21st and 22nd. Giovanni Salito, Josh Ladd, oh, that could be fast, watch out for him. Thomas Edwards and David Santana. Can in the engine start to harmonize. Well, it's the sprint race, boys and girls. Round number seven, gather at the chickens, take cover behind those gals one more time. Pretty and it is really our leader, slow. Yeah, Brito was really slow indeed. I think he's already gonna lose out to Boudelar who gets by. That's gonna be a challenge potentially for Reed. Let's see what he has. In fact, Fredo goes all the way off track on the exit of Tamborello. Meanwhile, Reed has opened up a big gap. Boudelar in second. The new driver That's not brave enough to, to regrid is David Santana. Although I say that he could have been given a penalty as uh, we got a spinner, a couple spinners coming off of Tosa, Marty Prado being one of them. Looks like also Tom Van Hoyman and Matty Sipola looped it around coming out of that first hairpin. As they are back racing well back in the order of the back of the field now. Pardo, Van Hoyman, and Sipola. All this going on behind Reed, who's starting to distance himself. And I'll tell you what, Valteria Lander is on the reverse of 
last race. He's already got himself up to 13th, while Osterkamp's still down in 17th, Bill. Indeed. Ooh, another spinner. That was Tessier trying to get it going again. Right in front of a crowd, right in front of Charlie Summers, Ryan Hay. Boy, luckily he spun off the track. There was a there was a crowd behind him. All right, first lap already done. Reed's still up at the front. Budelar's gonna try and follow him. To Matsky, uh, up one position, which is really good news for him. Because he's really not being challenged too hard right now. So Tim can really focus on his race, try to get some fast laps before the the uh, hot shoes start to catch up to him. Yeah, the front three have stretched out. Oh, and Valteria Lander, I spoke too soon, Bill. Looks like Tamborello cost him. Side by side going in with Sherry. Yes, he did. Yeah, I think it was a question of presentation there. Was the, was Sherry all the way there? It looked like Sherry had a pretty his nose pretty well in. Oh, and and uh, I think I think Nolden and Morris both clattered into him, so they're gonna have severe damage and not really any good opportunity to uh, try and get that repaired. Yeah, Nolden is dropping like a rock right now. It's three wide in front of him. Look at this, oh! Diving to the inside, making it work is Josh Ladd. I'm telling you, Laddie is a fast guy when you give him an opportunity, he will grab it. And that yellow car- and Nolden. That yellow car involved, that was Osterkamp, our winner of the last round. He lost a bunch of spots. Dominic Gatermeyer is going to slip through. It's Ostermeyer and Herman, those two yellow machines running 16th and 17th. They're cousins, one for Sim RC, one for Sim RC Retro. They, tra they trail Gatermeyer. Nolden now up in 14th, gets to the inside. No, he doesn't. That is uh, Sherry makes the move on Nolden. Nolden tried everything he can. The front wing is bent up on Nolan's car. He's struggling, but now he's got to run. Sherry's going to get past. Yeah, looks like Nolan's got the inside, the side that you want coming down to Tamborello, but starting to stall out a little bit again. He probably has some damage from that contact he made. Side by side behind them as well, Gatermeyer and Osterkamp. I feel like Bill Osterkamp is, is trying desperately to tiptoe through this. Is Now he's finally going to get past Sherry. Gatermeyer he's trying so hard to be safe, but he's not getting opportunities. Go ahead. Finally, if Sherry gets out of the way as three cars go through, Gatermeyer, Osterkamp, and Herman. Sherry drops back now into 16th position. He's under attack again. This is well, a little bit farther back. Let's look at Edwards under. And then Edwards spin it off. Simple mistake. We got to go to the podium, though, because remember I mentioned Tim Matsky. Well, some of those fast drivers have caught him. It's Rigby, Summers, Emre, Barton, all in the line behind him. Barton, the one I think they need to worry about the most. Rigby had a pretty good, pretty good feature race, but yeah, they are coming. Summers, Emre, Barton. Let's look at Embry right now, because here comes Barton making a move. This is for seventh. For six, Barton gets it. Either he breaks super early or Emre let that through. From what we've talked to Emre, I think he's just trying to get to the finish. I think he let Barton by there. The trail of that train, Connor Ryan and Allie Hay racing ninth and tenth. Ooh, Rigby's got a great run on Matsky. Matsky holds the inside. He's going to have to break very late to hold this defensive line. Rigby just not late enough, and now that puts him under threat from Summers. Summers had nowhere to put the car through the chicane, but now they have a good job as they run down into Villeneuve. Woo! Brave stuff from Summers. He gets it done before the corner is even over. That is confidence in your car and confidence in your braking. And this means that Summers now has clear air ahead of him to try and go and attack Tim for the podium. Rigby trying to stick with him. But poor Rigby, he's got Summers in front of him. He's got another very confident driver, Luke Barton, behind him. And Barton's moves that we've seen so far 
have been decisive ones. He's not really making risky attempts. Takes a little peek, but it doesn't look like a serious one down on Rigby into the breaking of Alta. You say confident, that's a euphemism for, for aggressive. Just for you <laughs> newcomers watching GSRC. Here comes Barton right now, looking on the uh, looking on the side of Rigby. On the outside, gonna get some momentum, makes it work. Rig boy for Rigby lost all of his momentum. Almost getting in there is Grossman as well. See oh. you later, Rigby. And he clatters the wall for good measure. A little bit of wing damage. Thankfully, I don't think he hit the corner of the car. Just gonna be body damage. And I can report after that happened, Kerry Nolden with his damage has had to come in to get that repaired. Let's watch on board Rigby. Another time where a little bit too much of the right foot and around he goes. So Summers up to third. Matsky in fourth and Barton behind him. This will stay on this. This is some good racing going up. Up front, it's Reed has two seconds. And um, Boudelar has about six seconds back to these guys in third. Good mm. run from Barton. Yeah. I uh, don't know if he's going to be able to pass. You need to be much farther alongside to attempt an Apiratella. Oh. He's going to try it anyways. Woof. I said confident. Luke you know, Barton. The car. My dad used to say the kind of guy that go fishing for Moby Dick in a rogue boat and bring his own tartar sauce. Luke Barton now up into fourth position. Yeah, Charlie Summers is going to be a little bit harder of a proposition. The drivers he's been overtaking, I, I think, have been a little bit slower. No offense to them, but uh, Barton's now got, uh, you were talking about Moby, Fish, or Moby Dick. He's got bigger fish that he's got to deal with. Quickly back to seventh. Oh, my goodness. This is Ryan in a, in a pinata full of bees. He is being hounded by Alistair Hay. Right behind him, that's Josh Ladd, another confident driver. Holy oh, and they smoke. got a car coming back. Whoa! That was Charlie, Charlie Summers. Summers. What happened there? Can we get a replay? Summers made almost the exact same mistake that we saw last lap. I don't mind the mistake, but then he brings it right out in front of him. Holy moly. Well, to his credit, he thought he was off the racing line. He just didn't realize there was four cars barreling down, two of them going too wide. See, yeah, I, I don't blame him. He, okay. He holds it off to the side. Woo. And credit nope. to everybody for avoiding that, too. That is a really good point you just made. He brought the car out. He wasn't on the racing line. He just didn't know that there were all three racing lines were under were being used at the same time. Look at that. They're coming at you. That sixth place battle. Lad, Ryan, Hay, Emre, Osterkamp is the fastest one of all back in 10th. He's staying out of trouble. He's just been making really slow progress. And I say slow, but he's still got 15 minutes left. He's only used up these 10 minutes. I still think a top 10 is possible for Renee. This is where the action is. If we look off the back of Connor Ryan. The front three cars are all separated. Yes, Luke Barton is fast, but he's got 6.3 seconds to get up to Bukhlar in second. No reason to go there. This is where it is, back here. Now watching off the back of Ryan. We jump up there as Emre loses another one. This time to Osterkamp, yet again. Seeing that responsible racing from Evan Emre. And oh. spin behind them. That's Charlie, Charlie Summers, Summers, one more. Again. Not sure that it's really worth going and seeing, but Summers, Summers having a bit of a bad fall, I'd say. Guy, oh, jeez. Hey, gets past uh, Ryan. But Ryan's coming back at him. He's got a good head of steam. I don't think he's got this in a Villeneuve. You can see he backs out of it. This Hay and Ryan, this is, these are cars that are equally matched. The one back there in ninth is Ostergap, obviously. Being held up by these guys. Just, again, Ostergap thinking big picture. He's just going to be careful. Let's see if he can get these two. Get what he can. He's got the slipstream, but yeah. See, this is the difference from what we saw between Ostercamp 
and Barton because Osterkamp probably could have tried to present his nose up to there, but decided not to because if he saw that he didn't have that nose in, even though he knows he could outbreak them. Defensive need from Ryan. Yep. Or so, <laughs> and again, seeing the difference between drivers. Ryan doesn't care about reputation. Emre kind of moves over when he sees fast drivers coming, just looking to get a good finish. And uh, Ryan's a fighter. Now they work through. Now this is where things are going to pick up. Let's see what type of line Ryan takes here. Now don't be fooled. This the the uh, straight kind of weaves back and forth. But look at this. Osterkamp's going to determine what type of line uh, Ryan takes right away as he gets a nose right out of Ravaza. No, but he's got to tuck back in, take one more shot at it. Now he's going to have to do it to the outside. This is where you might try to see him outbreak him. And I can report as we watch this battle almost forced to the outside. Oof. And hits the curbs for good measure. But uh, I can report that Matsky got overtaken by the lad, so the top five has changed hands. Boy, Ryan gave Ozerkamp room, but not any more room than he needed on that one as he Ryan eased over to get that good entry in. You gotta be careful, because uh, there is M. Ray still back there. Stefan Herman is in there. Dominic Gatermeyer. Now he's move. got presentation up to Piratella. And he finishes. Ryan does a good job of letting Osterkamp by without losing momentum. So Ryan's going to hang on in ninth. Now Osterkamp has clear track ahead of him, but he's got about 1.3 seconds to get up to Ali Hay. And we're not missing anything up front. Reed still leading by about three and a half seconds. And Barton is only six seconds behind Boudelar, but just uh, doesn't seem to be gaining quickly. We don't need to go there. I can just report that Marty Pardo had a spin as he sits on the track. Let me go to right now. Can we find Marty in 23rd position? Marty, you got to get the car going there. You've been there for a long time. Now he's got it rolling. Yeah, but up to the up from the front row down to 23rd, yeah. I'd say this. This number six has got a lot to learn in this car. So we uh, jump over to 10th. M. Ray still in battles. This time, Herman going to slip up the inside. Take it away. Yeah, Herman has been working. He was stuck behind Gator Meyer, who's back there in 12th. He finally got that one done. Then he gets around Rolling Thunder. Now he's on the back. He's got to run on Connor Ryan. Oh, my goodness. Herman is picking him up, putting him down quick. He's going to wait. And let's go to Osterkamp. Big development here because Matsky was side by side with uh, Ali Hay through Villeneuve, and Osterkamp just clawed them down. Managed to get one. He almost got two in one corner here. I mean, he was he was a long ways back, and the side by side action was was just like presenting steak on a platter to a lion. Matsky started this race, this lap in sixth. He's now back to eighth. That's what led, uh, as Hay got there, that led Osterkamp get on. Oh, look at this. I think Ali's just pulling out of the way. An another, no, well, no, Ali made a mistake. Oh, he was coming out of Aquamina Raleigh way too slow, and uh, Osterkamp, once again, he pounced. Up to sixth. Osterkamp with 3.6 seconds to get up to Josh Ladd, racing in fifth. Now we go back to Stefan Herman. Remember, he's worked his way through Gatermeyer and Imre. In fact, Gatermeyer's got around Imre. Now he's working on the back of Connor Ryan. Ryan's a tough customer, though. Yeah, I, I like the fight that I've been seeing from him. I don't think he's going to be looking at the back of him for long, because look at this. He's already got the slipstream. Ryan actually gave him the inside here. So Herman should have a relatively easy time finishing this up into the breaking. And indeed, that pass is done and dusted. Brian back to 10th. But now he's got Gatermeyer behind him. This could be fun. Yeah, we've watched Gatermeyer in multiple races. Uh, a little frisky in places. We're going to stay right in line. Hop on board with uh, the number 37. Looking up at Connor Ryan. Boy, he's right on his gearbox. And you gotta watch out for that, especially when you come up to clo close, uh, slow corners. 
if you're too close, you can so easily get into the back of them. Because uh, especially when someone's uh, that close on you, unless you see them make a dive, you're trying to back up the corners a little bit just so that you can get the run off the corner and make sure that they don't attack you into the next one. We can afford oh, Martin had a mistake. That lets Josh Ladd through. This was an Alta. Martin was in third at the time. A great job of driving by Simon Grossman. Watch this. Grossman is first on the scene. Well, and good job to Barton. He, your instinct is to just go, but he saw him coming, held station. And, and again, it cost him a position, but imagine if he had tried to pull backwards, because here as we watch from onboard Grossman, yeah, if he had pulled backwards to get off of the track, Grossman would have hit him anyways. So once again, Barton does what he did in the sprint race. It's just be really fast and continue to make mistakes. So out of third, he falls back to fifth. Grossman now in the podium spot, Josh Ladd. Boy, I like Joshy. Yeah, and Bill, we haven't covered Josh Ladd. He didn't get regrid. He started from 24th. This has been yeah. just a stunning climb. Grossman as well from 15th to third. What Barton spin does is put him in in the clutches of now of Osterkamp. There was a pretty big gap after Osterkamp got around Hay to get up to the next guys. But now they've all come back a little bit as Barton spun and then the drivers in front had to take evasive action. Makes me wonder if Barton will have anything for Josh Ladd. And Grossman as well, not too far ahead of them. So if these two start to gain on Simon, we could see a three-way fight for the final podium spot. And that's with only six minutes to go. Make make that four-way if Renee catches him. Just report that it's only two and a half seconds from uh, from Reed to Boutelar. So if Reed makes a mistake, he's he's not home free. Take a look at his lap out times. Our Reed Reed must have had some sort of mistake or traffic because he he had very consistent 140s, and then there's a 142 putting a blotch on his record. And uh, Boudelar, in the meantime, has no such blemish because uh, he's just been straight 140s ever since lap six. That kind of explains there he is. why that lead has been chopped down slightly is that one lap. Now, Stefan Herman has got around Matsky. I think Herman's going to pull away, but the real interesting battle is ninth. This is Mats or Gatermeyer running up. Oh, here it is right here. It's Gatermeyer looking on the inside of Matsky. Uh -oh. oh! That Gator's oh. not going to eat. Yeah, I, I was kind of watching, and I saw Dominic take a big bite on that attempt, and just <laughs> uh, it's more than he could chew. Stop it. Matsky in 10th, Ryan in 11th, Emre in 12th. Another one to watch we haven't talked about, Director. Can we go back to 13th? This guy made the uh, best of day honors out of out of Mosport. This is Alain Tessier racing in 13th. He might have something to get up to Emre. It's about three seconds back. 13th won't yeah. award many points today, no. though. It only goes down to 16th. He will be 12th because Dominic just had his incident and he's going to fall down the order. Ooh. Barton coming back. Boy, this is some big names here. That's Renee Osterkamp he's working on. And actually, excuse me, it's Osterkamp making the move. Osterkamp overtaking Barton. And that's the top five I predicted. He's got two seconds up the lad. He's actually on the back Let's of Grossman down, yeah. right now. Whoa! Lad got him! Wow! Boy, the tip of the hat to Grossman for leaving Lad a lot of room there, too. We, we, you talked about how the, uh, the code word for aggressive has been confident. That wasn't aggressive. That was just plain rude. I, I, I mean, 
usually when you make a move into Villeneuve, you can kind of see it coming. This one, I did not realize that he was going to be able to stick his nose in. And for that matter, he made it work. I, I think more because Grossman, like you said, he just kind of pulled over just to try to preserve the car. So Laddie up into third. Grossman, not good. Grossman's got some good pace. He's not going to give up that podium yet. Osterkamp and Barton. Boy, we got some big names behind Josh Ladd. Well, we talked Honestly, about... Honestly, Ladd will be Ladd will be lucky to finish ahead of all of these three cars that are coming. Uh, the move that he just made, I don't think he's going to give it up willingly. Uh, but like I was just saying before, we have that battle. It is now four cars fighting for third. And I, I honestly couldn't tell you who's going to take it between them. Well, a bad run out of that final corner from Grossman is going to let the door open for his cousin teammate as Ostercap now up to fourth. All right, so Ladd absolutely just grabbed it from the hands of Grossman. Can Osterkamp do the same back to Ladd? That's the question. Yeah, I'm going to revise my last statement there. Ladd has got some pretty good pace. Well, he had to climb from farther yeah. back than Osterkamp. Yeah. Oh, and he's pushing. How many cars do we see go off track off of that corner? up to the rear of him though the 29 starting to stop that uh number 42. it's renee in the yellow car josh lad riding in the red two minutes to go if he's gonna do it he's gotta be decisive bill you can't, you just cannot make a half-hearted move, especially if he's been paying attention to what Josh has been doing ahead of him. And you can see the two cars behind as well, Grossman and Barton in a battle, but right now, Osterkamp in pretty good position here. He's got to run, but he's, he's not close enough. Nope. This is psychological, just ducking his car out. Oh, Rene knows I could make a, 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 a dumb try attempt. At oh, it gets a little loose on a Ravazza, though. Going to lose all of his momentum. Going to have to wait one more lap, I think. Luke talked about those tires. He's been he's been abusing them. Let's to, go back uh, to fifth. Yeah, drop back. This front. is Grossman taking the defensive line. Barton with some speed on the outside. Gets it done. All this going on as our leader has seen the flag with no pigment. Ooh. Uh, we might want to go to third because Ladd now has Osterkamp right underneath him. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on the leaders. Let's stay on this one as long as we can. Leader's still on the back half of the track. Josh is going to be tough. We'll keep an eye on the leaders if you want to follow this action, Bill. Lad goes a little bit wide. Osterkamp right behind him. I think it's going to be Osterkamp's going to have to try to do it either into Ravaza or out of Ravaza before the start finish line. This would have been a good chance for him. He's close. But you can see no defensive move there. So it looks like for now, Lad knows what he's got under him. Reed through the the first corner there, Ravaza, through the second Ravaza. Nothing between him and the checker flag. Let's give round number seven to Phil Reed. Boutelar is going to take second. Now the battle for third. Ladd with a good run out of the final corner. Here comes Osterkamp. Is he going to run out of pavement? Oh, they come very close, and it's going to be too little, too late. Josh Ladd gets third. Osterkamp does all he could to get fourth. Barden gets the best of Grossman. Back in ninth, Connor and Emre very close at the line, but that one is going to go to Emre. 13th position. Nothing much going on there. And I believe everybody else just bringing him in. Yeah. Drivers who finished out of the points, Kerry Nolden, Lubomir Morris. Dominic Gatermeyer. 
Salido is going to be the last one to score here in the sprint race in 16th. Okay, the racing is over here in Italy, but our broadcast, you know, is not. We'll take a short break. We'll come back, run down the entire finishing order, get to talk to some of the drivers before we put a lock on the gate. Don't go far. This is the Global Sim Racing Channel's coverage of Apex Online Racing's Formula 0 2.0 Season 11 Championship Round Number 7 from Imola. The feature race is done. The sprint race is done. Let's give you the results of that shorter one that just take, took place. Wire to wire for Phil Reed, as expected. It was an easy run for him. He comes ahead about 3.4 seconds ahead of the French driver, David Boutillard. Josh Ladd put on a show. He gets that final podium, holding off two-time champion and current point leader, Rene Holstenkamp. Luke Barton had another spin. Maybe could have been a little bit higher. He has to settle for fifth. Back after your top 10. Simon Grossman, Ali Hay, Stefan Herman, Evan Emre, and Connor Ryan. Joe? Charlie Summers, after multiple spins in this race, still manages in 11th. Tom Van Hoyman coming home in 12th. Elaine Testier also had an issue or two, but still gets 13th. Tim Matsky tried to withhold the tide starting from fourth, but 14th is what poor Tim could manage. Christopher Rigby comes home in 15th. Giovanni Salito, we mentioned last one to get points. He finishes 16th with Kerry Nolden, 17th, and Lubomir Morris in 18th. There's two fast drivers that couldn't try to make inroads. Tom Edwards, gets 19th and David Santana rounds out our top 20 bill. Then hidden blackjack is Daniel Morris in the double ducks position. It was Dominic uh, Gatermeyer. Gatermeyer put on quite a show though. Marty Pardo started on the outside of row one. He has to settle for 23rd, but he didn't cause any problems and that's all you can really hope for. Leonard Cherry in 24th. Quarter century Marcos of Italia or Lander. Oh, not a good, 
Not a good finish for him. Another big name down to the bottom, Matty Sippola. All right, it is time for interviews, and I'm fortunate enough to be able to talk to the driver who finished second. This is the man from France, David Boutelar. David, congratulations on a good sprint race win, a uh, second place finish. Thank you very much. I, I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Um, let's talk about your let's talk about your feature race win because the, the sprint race win you did just what you wanted. Feature race, a little more hectic for you. Yeah, the whole week I did some good practice so I, I thought I would be in the top 10. Uh, I, I, my qualification was not good so I was, was in the, uh, at the back of the grid and I got rear-ended by Christopher I think and so I had to pit uh, twice. Nevertheless, able to finish up with a good with a good sprint race result. Let's talk a little bit about your about your life. I don't want to break any rules here with the EU, but I believe you were raised in France, but you're not living in France now, right? Do I have that right? No, it, it's the other side. I am Dutch, former Dutch. Dutch, and I live in France. So I, I married a, a French wife. Okay. And you and she's a she's making you live in her country. Well, that's the way it works. Hello. I thought you put on a good race. It's great to get to. I don't know if we've done an interview with you before. Is this your first interview with GSRC? Uh, once before. Once, once before. before. Well, let's keep it coming. Let's make it a habit. The good good finish today for you. Good luck the rest of the way. And give your wife a hug for us. Okay, thank you. I want to thank uh, Tom and uh, Ellie Hay uh, for uh, being good teammates. Okay. You got it, David. Congratulations. David Boutelar, racing out of France but uh, a Dutch driver. Okay, Joe, over to you. Yeah, I thought that name sounded Dutch to me. <laughs> so uh, in the meantime, we've uh, got Luke Barton with us again, who managed to get a fifth place, a top five. Uh, not a bad feat, especially when you considered you finished right behind the winner of the previous race. Yeah, um, I still spam though, you guys. Uh, I, I was in third for a period of time. Um, but uh, yeah. I, I'm happy with that. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a bit rubbish, and I'm never. I, I don't seem to be able to keep it on the island. So that's as good as I could have hoped for today. Um, the start was really, 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 really fun. Like I think I made up four places on the run down into turn one, um, and then another place down into the hairpin. It was, uh, it was pretty fun. Yeah, really enjoyed the race. Yeah, and that makes you wonder, considering you had a, a decent result uh, in the first one, and now. Uh, a top five in the sprint. What can you do when you uh, keep the mistakes out? Now talk about that battle at the end where we see four cars trying to scramble for the podium. Uh, what was going through your mind when suddenly you see, you know, the likes of Ladd and Osterkamp and Grossman and you're in the mix thinking I could spray the champagne here. Honestly, I was like, go on, Josh. Like uh, I, I thought um, Rene would pass him quite easily. Um, he caught up to me really rapidly. Um, but uh, Josh, Josh held his own. I was really impressed watching that up going on up ahead. So uh, obviously uh, the next round, we're uh, heading over to the likes of, I'm checking my script here to see where we're headed next week. Watkins Glen, it looks like. So very, very different track compared to this one. This one, a lot twistier. Uh, Watkins Glen, so much more drafting opportunities. Do you think you'll fare better uh, without... Uh, as, as technical of track to have to tackle? Um, yeah, I think um, in the past I've had decent pace at Watkins. Um, I also, I like, I like, I like the drafting game. Like it's, it's fun to, to battle with people because it's all about where you position your car. And if someone does try and overtake, you know, they've committed to a particular part of the track and uh, you've seen me before. Like I like to pin people up on the inside. If, uh, if they want that inside line, they're going to have to work hard for it. So um, I really enjoy the sort of the defensive game uh, that you have to play there. Yep. And uh, we look forward to that. Should give us some good entertainment. And we go to New York. Congratulations on a top five here in the sprint. Thanks, gang. That was Luke Bart. Director. Director. Yeah, he comes back. There, there we have. As uh, we finish up with Luke, we now go to Bill with our winner. Bill Reed, Soup here. You know, I've been doing this long enough. I pride myself at getting an idea of what the drivers have in store. You confused the heck out of me today, Phil. You look so, what's a word, underwhelming in the feature race. And then 
uh, you were real nice in the in the sprint. Uh, what's going on? Well, in the uh, well, I must admit, I had a, a very very shocking qualifying. Um, yeah. I was expecting to. I was. I was. I say it's expecting. I was hoping to get at least second. I had the pace for second. I was expecting third. I knew that Valtteri would be up there at, in the end. At qualifying. You know, he he always is, and obviously Rene is just Rene. Uh, so I was hoping for that, and then it's, I forget that I've come come to Imola, and I don't know what it is about this track, but I physically cannot qualify on this track properly. I always make mistakes, and it sent me all the way to the back, and. So I mean, I was thought I was in for an exciting race, trying to sort of fight my way through the field. Unfortunately, I got a bit of a, well, I say a bit of a tapper, quite a hefty shunt uh, on lap one, which pretty much ended my race there. And I was able to get back to the pits and, well, I towed back to the pits and I, you know, got got the, got the repairs done. And then I thought, well, I'll try to go from here. This will be fine. I'll have the tires and have the fuel from here. So I'll just go to the end. Unfortunately, I didn't fill the, tire, the fuel. So I had to come back in again, which was a lot of fun. So, I mean, it, it, it kind of just ended, but luckily there were enough incidents and stuff in the feature race that meant I was able to finish within the top 20 and therefore got pole position for this race, which pretty much led to a relatively simple race, I think. You know, just drove down. I, I, I scared myself a couple of times, but uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I'll take the win. It's not what I was after. I was hoping for a much better race night, but, you know, a win is always a win. Is it? Is a little bit intimidating when you have a, I don't mean to downplay this, but maybe a less known, you have Marty Pardo off to your, off to your left when you're going to start this one. I guess you're thinking, boy, if I can just get out front, I don't have to worry about anything. Um, I, I mean, there, there's always a little bit of that. I think there's a little bit of that with anyone that's sort of, because, you know, you don't normally expect the sort of the faster top end drivers to right. be sort of towards the fronts anyway. So you're always paired up with someone normally that's a little bit slower. But I mean, I mean, it, it, from what I've seen from 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 the field so far this season, is it's sort of the mid, a lot of the mid area that where that's where the issue comes from. The front is fine and the rear end's fine. It's usually right in that mid area where the problem is. So, being out at front, I didn't have any worries. And then as soon as I got the good start and I had and I jumped in, I just that was it. And I switched off and just went. That was it. All I focused on was the the rest of the race. Well, it was a nice. It's way to the. Uh... The dynamic of this series, the way the rules are set up, you can you can salvage a bad result with a nice sprint race. That's what you did today. Good luck down the rest of the way, and let's see if we can get that team a little closer to uh, to those uh, SimRC guys. That would be nice. Thanks, guys. Bill Reed, winner of the sprint race today. And, and with think, that, I think we have uh, one more as uh, Tom Van Hoyman has joined us. Managed to uh, finish in 12th, although he was gridded a little bit higher. It seems, unfortunately, part of that was lost in a, a bit of a spin in Alta there, Tom. Yeah, the first lap, I was, uh, I think I was behind Charlie. And uh, it was the, the little hairpin at the left, you know. And um, I was just following him, uh, second gear, normal as usual. And I just lost the car. I w it was just gone. <laughs> I was like uh, starting... Uh, from the back all again so <laughs> just like last uh, season at uh, Imola as well so but I recovered uh, very well I think P12 was, was really good I overtook two cars in the last lap and uh, yeah that was I think that was the key also to get P12 if I didn't uh, uh, was like committed to get those positions I would have got maybe P13 I think but yeah it was a good race Good comeback, and uh, my uh, my future race was really good as well. That was, uh, I think, my overall. That was one of my best races, I think, to defend from Evan and to defend from Charlie as well. I've gone in the battle with him and overtook him once back again, but he was still faster. I know Charlie is faster, so um, I tried everything I could. Uh, help my teammate uh, a bit as well, Alistair. He was in front uh, in the future race, so <laughs> I helped him a little. Um, but yeah, for me, it was a really, really good race and, uh, and a sprint race as well. I think I could have maybe got top 10 again in a sprint race, but it is what it is. Indeed. And you mentioned uh, Imola last season and having uh, something similar happen there. Are you the type of driver that, that tends to be strong at certain tracks and not as strong at others, or are you kind of an all-arounder? Um, uh, <laughs> wow, that's a good question. <laughs> um, yeah. Normally I'm an I'm an all rounder, but some tracks for me are just like pointed out to be good at. 
um, last season at uh, Imola. I was at uh, pole position for the sprint race, but unfortunately my VR uh, knocked, so <laughs> I couldn't see anything. Uh, so I needed to start back from the pits, and I was like, um, I watched my laps back last season, and I was like just as fast as uh, as you know Phil Reed, uh, Charlie as well, those guys. As I was angry, you know, I need to make myself angry to get fast. But <laughs> that's the point, you know. Um, if I make myself angry in a future race, then it's going horribly wrong. And if I do it in a sprint race, then it's going quite okay. <laughs> but first, it looks like I need to spend something to get angry <laughs> or something. You know, the point is, if I'm in a good position, you know, it's like, all right, take the car home, don't do anything stupid. But if you spun, and um, the point is like, in my head, it's like, all right, get those position back, go work for it, you know? And if you're in a good position, you're like, all right, just take it easy. And we watch it out, you know. Yeah, and and we love that that gives us some entertainment seeing you try to come back through with that red mist down. But we got to close up here, Tom. Thanks for coming and talking to us, and uh, looking forward to seeing you at the Glen. Yeah, I love Glen. So see you guys next week. Thank you. And that's cool. Tom Van Hoyman. Okay, that's going to wrap it up for us. Let's go ahead and tell the people, thank the people who made this possible. We'll start with everybody at Apex Online Racing for organizing the Formula Renault 2.0 League and to all the members who support this broadcast. We know you have a lot of choices. We're honored to be your choice of broadcast companies. Thanks to the company's equipment and software that you see on the screen right now that we use to stream cyberspace into your place. The original music comes courtesy of Eric Eckholm and June Alon. See the screen to have to contact each of them. The Formula Renault Season 11 Championship returns in one week. Every Friday, we hit it back to back. Round eight is another doubleheader event, and that's going to be from the Glen. And it's going to be Das Boot. That means something different in German, but in English it means there's going to be Boot in the bridge. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, visit GlobalSimRacingChannel.com, or you can check us out on social media. We're on Twitter at GSR Channel, Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel, Instagram at GSRC underscore Gram. Don't forget to head over to the YouTube page and hit that big red subscribe button as well so you don't miss a moment here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Finally, on behalf of the crew, Joe, Sean, and Dougie, I'd like to thank all of you for watching. With that said, we're off to have fun storming the castle. So until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.